Hello folks, I'm Tufty Indigo and we've got an exciting Forge Alliance game for you today on this absolutely huge 20x20 20 20 map, President's Asylum. It has a lot of land in the center and a lot of water and islands around the outside and all of those islands have mass points on them so we should see some drops on those islands or maybe some engineers walking across the water to get to those later in the game. Quite a snappy game for you today I'm told but we do have a lot of players. So let's get into the game right away. And we will start with the Lemon team, team one, who are in the top half of the map. And so the highest rated player on team one is in the mustard color and that's AMB and they chose Seraphim. Every player chose their race this time. We didn't have any randoms. Uh, we've already got uh, people talking about what their roles are in the game. So let's make this quick. Gazeiten Craft is the in the Burgundy, and they're on the extreme left of the map here, playing as UEF. They're also known as Tidal Force on the Discord, and they suggested this cast, so make sure you go and thank Tidal Force on Discord for this game if you enjoy it. And then going down the rankings, we have Barhan, who is in the yellow, over on the other end there, on the right-hand end. And they're also playing Seraphim. Mad Lord in the jade color it has got this little uh, enclosed area all on their own here. They're playing as Aeon. Next is Babel, who is playing in the crimson, which makes them the same color as the uh, the civilian base at the front here. This base is hostile, and it will attack players who come to reclaim it. And this base is also hostile, but only to the south team, because this is Babel's base. And they've also selected Aeon. And then the lowest ranked on this team is Sans, who is in the orange over here in the mid left. Uh, quite far back position, very much an eco position, I think, though. They do have exposure to the shoreline. They're playing a Seraphim in the orange. And then this is a uh, symmetric map. It's top bottom mirrored rather than being point symmetric. So the, the left hand side is uh, playing against a, a mirror position. The right-hand side is playing against a mirror position and so on. And so on the grass team in the bottom half of the map, the highest rated player is Vist, who is in the blue. And they're at the front here in a lovely Seraphim set of units. And the next one down is Raider, who is electric pink in the Cybran. We've got some very confusing color combinations going on, so do pay attention to these colors because we have electric pink and we also have a baby pink next to them. And the baby pink is the lowest rated player, Kailu. And they're playing as UEF, one of two UEF players on this team. We have Salty Pepper in the lime over on the right hand end here, and they're also playing Seraphim with Easy to Kill who is UEF, and they're playing in this terracotta color, and, and they also have this nice enclosed region. It's quite protected there. And then we have Blazer O' Flasher, who I always think should be Irish. You know, Blazer O' Flanagan. And they're playing in this emerald green, and they're just next to their lime green compatriots. Um, however, they're not really compatriots, as they are Aeon. So it's a, an aliens and alien lovers loving over in that corner. And so overall, the teams are pretty balanced here. We do have a, a, an early bomber coming out, but it gets shot down before it manages to uh, achieve much. And a bit of early a bit of early scouting, stroke raiding going out in the center. Um, but yeah, between the teams, it's, it's very balanced. We've got a 93% rating in quality uh, from the, the matchmaking system with only 24 points of elo in between the total elos of the two teams that's four points per player however as you can see the grass team does have a slightly higher highest rated player in vist who's the the highest rated in the whole game so will they be carrying their team later we'll find out you can see there's drops coming out. Uh, Barhan's been dropping off to their front line near their commander, whereas Babel has been dropping onto this plateau here. But the engineers are just having a bit of a tea break there before they start work. We've got... This is... Uh, 
quite aggressive going on here. They've already taken out the engineer that was building this. Going to take the mass points as well. Um, these more forward ones have taken out this mass points. Oh, well, they've not quite finished it off yet, but there you go. They're on it. And so a lot of uh, undefended soft underbelly here being taken out. However, if we just go and look at Raider, who is pushing their comm to the front here. They have friendly units from Vist to defend them and an enemy comm in Gazeitencraft facing off there. Not quite pushing in yet. An opposing drop coming out here. Babel did not start by building a factory on this land. However, they were able to uh, to mop up that engineer that was dropped here. So that was perhaps a little insufficiently aggressive uh, out of Blazer if they wanted to take this plateau. And if we look out to the wider map, we see both teams have got to start on their back slots here. Uh, with the, the protected eco player expanding that way. But it also, it is the bottom team. That's Team Grass. Who's made a bit more progress on taking these islands. With both of the pink flavoured players coming out to take this left side. And we've got some lime coloured engineers from Salty Pepper working on the right side and the north side the lemon team has started on their islands but they're just they're just a bit less advanced i like the putting of a radar on each one of these small islands it's only a t1 radar but it will help to uh, spot anything that's coming in like any enemy drops any naval that's uh, hoping to do some sneaky action at the back there and so, actually, if we if we look at the state of the front line here on land, the left side has mainly its aggressive comms. Comms are all quite far to the front here. And they've got some land factories to back them up with T1 land units. But there's a lot of units moving around, and it's mostly posturing. Whereas on the other side over here, the comms are a bit further back. There's this kind of open no man's land in the center. And they're just pushing their units forward to roam around and patrol this area rather than bringing their comms up quite so aggressively. And then in the center, we see it's Blazer O'Flasher who has anchored the very center point of the map there and is just starting a T2 upgrade. So I, I think it's very hard to see if you're trying to watch the whole game here, what's actually just kind of posturing and prodding attacks and what's actually uh, a real assault. And I think this started out as a prod, but it's turned into an, a, a very dangerous situation here for AMV. Which comms being forced back by T1 land before their T1 land could even catch up to it. However, they've walked some of their land units into range of this T2 point defense here, and so they're getting mopped up. AMB's decided to full commit to this attack. But their comm is on about two-thirds health. Uh, and they're losing a lot. They've lost most of their land units already to this T2 point defenses. They've managed to eliminate one of the T2 point defenses, but there's another one here slightly further back, still getting the damage in. And they're just melting health away there. They're already into the red, and they've got no help behind them. They're just surrounded by T1 units, and that's it. AMB is the first to exit this battle. And yeah, they got kind of baited into overcommitting there by those T2 point defenses. They couldn't hang out in the center, just getting picked off at range. They needed to either go back or forward, and as it turned out there, going forward was the wrong choice. So now, with their units handed over, this is quite a large left hand for Gazeitencraft to manage. And it has left Vist free to push in a bit here. They're not 
hugely strong and they've strung themselves out a bit. They're not pushing their com all the way in. They don't want to get caught out in the same way. But they they do have access to some more sensitive areas here where there's there's no land units to protect them. However, Gazeitencraft does have T2 engineers coming up. And so we should see a, a more defended front line here. However, it does mean the Gazeitencraft is now fending off two players at once. And with only one comm to fight two comms, that puts them in a very bad position there. There's a lot of noise coming from the other side here, so I just want to look at what's going on here. And what we see is Barhands pushing some units up. Or rather, retreating some units back after a push over here. But it doesn't look like anybody's in immediate danger there. So let's focus on what's going on here with this 1v2. Only it's not really a 1v2 because uh, Viscom is chilling out over here while there's a full battle going on on the left side. Raider still only on T1 here, so they're really having trouble doing the damage against the T2 units from Gazeitencraft. And the comms already on about 60% health there. And uh, losing out to Gazeitencraft, who has both gun and nano. As Raider only has guns being forced back and looks like they're going to be driven off this position here if they even make it out. They've got no defenses to fall back to. They're down into the red. 2k. 1k. Looks like this could be it. Boom. And so though that brings the game back to even again in palm count as Raider is removed from the battlefield. And so let's wait and see who they get handed over to. Yes, that's this. So we now just have a double width front line on this left-hand end here. And so that's going to be difficult for both Gazeitencraft and Vist to manage. They've got more front line to defend. And so now the 2v1 comms situation has been resolved. But Vist is also looking pretty safe for now, surrounded by T2 point defense. There are a lot of T2 units pushing in, but it's going to be a costly push. And Vist did get T2, but none of the military upgrades, so that that is a bit uh, a bit chunkier but got extra health but they don't have the gun they don't have any kind of uh, regen well apart from the basic regen they don't have any regen upgrades to help them out and as they're getting surrounded by gazetting craft units it might be that gazetting crafts are able to pull off the double they're down into the yellow already while gazetting crafts on full health there's nothing to stop them they've got three stars of vets It's just walking out. Because, and this is down into the red. 500 hit points. There's not a lot of red units to attack them, but just enough. As this also is removed from the battle. And a bit of salt comes out from the chat. Uh, directed at this teammate there for losing their comm earlier on. So now, uh, easy to kill, who was in this nice protected position down here and has their comp all the way at the back, is now in charge of this whole left side for the grass team. And that's going to be very difficult. They're going to have to um, divert their economy over to building units to defend this area. But they've got almost no army. Um, they were going straight up into T3 air. Uh, there are some ASFs out on the field as well. But yeah, that's going to divert their attention and perhaps that's going to be a huge advantage to the Lemon team as Mad Lord still only has their, uh, their protected base and is... Well, they also have T3 air, but they've got it paused. And they're being bombed there by easy to kills strats. And that's the, not, that's the other orange there. From from Sands, torpedo bombing this naval. We haven't even covered this. We've got a, uh, a pink, baby pink colored naval force from Kailu, which is trying to remove Mad Lord from the water here at the back. And one torpedo bomber to defend against all of these subs, probably not really enough. However, if we look back at the land situation again, this T2 push from Gazeitencraft is just not stopping. And it's come up to the 
uh, economic and production base that has been handed over to Easy to Kill. And as I said a minute ago, this Easy to Kill just doesn't have enough to fight this. Not enough land. They've pushed out some T1 units, one T2 uh, Ilshavo or a couple of Ilshavos, but they're not coming out fast enough. And so they're just losing more stuff. And it does look like Gazeitencraft might just keep walking forward until they're stopped here. They're on five stars. 11.9k mass kill on their comm. That's amazing. However, the air production facilities of Easy to Kill have now been turned to gunships, and that broadsword is out. There's not a huge amount of anti air in Gazeitencraft's mix. And so. This broadsword might be able to get worked on. It's losing health gradually, but it's uh, it's got plenty of time. And if it's going to be joined by more of them, oh yeah, then that might actually end this push. And it might leave his item craft having to run back to some anti air before their comm gets sniped out. But they've already done so much damage here. They really don't need to throw the rest of their units away against gunships to uh, to prove anything here. If they just retreat now, I will actually all be fine. But um, yeah, their comms being caught out in the open. Two broadswords on it. Now a third one coming up. Also a T1 bomber. And it's just bleeding health. It's lost half of its health now. And there's no friendly anti-air. And there's also... Uh, well, there's friendly aircraft out from Sands. And they've just about saved the situation here. All the broadswords are down, I think. There's another one coming out, but it's not heading that way. It doesn't want to. Uh, it doesn't want to fight the one ASF and mostly Inties. And so, because Eisencraft can go away and lick their wounds a bit, they've got the regen to uh, to heal quite quickly. But that's actually not stopped their assault. They've pushed the rest of their units forward, and they've taken out so much on this left side here. And they want to finish off the Navy as well. That, uh, that submarine forcer in Kailu has been hugely effective against Mad Lord. It pushed Mad Lord out of the water here at the north. And it's now just taking out these the small islands. Um, could be free to bombard this base from the back, which would put Sands into a difficult situation. Uh, this, this little torpedo bomber is still trying to get rid of the subs. Um, yeah, but if Kailu loses the naval factories here, then it means that force is not going to be reinforced. And in fact, Kailu's got a lot more to worry about than their factories here as they comes down into the yellow. Three and a half K health. They're surrounded by those crimson units from Gazeitencraft, sorry, Burgundy units from Gazeitencraft, with more coming in. There's a, only a broadsword to defend them, but one broadsword is just not enough against the continuous streams of units here. And they're down to 500 hit points. 400, 200. And everyone's moved out of range. They're on 100 hit points, but nobody's shooting them. Oh, finally. So Kylie now out as well. So that's three players removed from the grass team. And it does look like Easy to Kill is going to be next on the hit list. Their broadswords have been a huge thorn in the sign of Gazeitencraft's push here. And, ah, uh, yeah, so Mad Lord, it does look like they've kind of fixed their uh, T3 air economy. They've got more power gens here. They're building up an air grid at the back. And so now they've got ASFs coming in. And if we compare their ASFs to the ASFs from Easy to Kill here, well, it looks like there's more green ones from Mad Lord. So those J could allow us. They, they don't want to take a fight now, though. They're running back as there's no broadswords falling to attack. But very much, uh, it's, it's not a huge difference there in terms of ASF numbers. And so Gazeitencraft walks in the completely open front door of easy to kill space here. And it's hard to see what easy to kill can do about this. They've got another broadsword up. But they're only making them so fast. And there is now some flak in the mix of Gazeitencraft. So those broadswords just not having as easy a time. They're just getting gradually worn down. 
Uh, easy to kill, bringing the Angies up a bit further, but it's it's all too late. Easy to kill, the latest casualty of Gazeitencraft's army, and the army moving in to clear up the rest of the eco. This is a lot of T2 mexes in this area. Oh, and we also have a death from Salty Pepper near the front line there. It's said killed by suicide, but um, that's not always accurate, so we'll have to check the replay to see what happened there. And then we've just had the resignation out of Blaze Row Flasher there. It's clear that Gazeitencraft just dominated this game once they had uh, it, once they had broken through the front line there. There was no defense in depth on this left side, and the the grass team just had nothing to stop them once they broken through. And so, yeah, amazingly quick and uh, exciting game there. And I'm sorry for the players who were on the right side there. I basically didn't look at the right side at all because, the, I mean, you can see even now there was basically no movement in the front line. Uh, not much danger going on there because Eichencraft was starting to take a bit of T3 from uh, Harbingers here. Um, but yeah, the calm with so much vet on it, 80 per second of regen. That's, uh, that's a pretty hard calm to kill. So, yeah, bit of a snowball there. It could have been anyone's from the start, but uh, once once the players in this bottom left corner started toppling, it was like dominoes there. Thank you for watching, as always. This has been Forged Lines Forever. I've been Tufty Indigo. Toodle pip.